Praise God, praise God, praise God. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Welcome to the first day of the fast. Well, the first thing I want to do, let me see, I need this light, I don't. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is apologize to you guys. Um, I was supposed to get up on here at 5 o'clock a.m. That did not happen. I didn't hear our, our, our alarm. <laughs> but I praise God anyway, because one thing about it, you are faithful. Come on, somebody, hallelujah, we must be faithful. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Um, uh, I have been um, actually counseling a lot of women that have been abused or being abused. So I probably was just tired. Who knows? But I did not hear a an alarm. <laughs> but um, praise God, we are here. Um, like I said, this is the first day of the fast. So I pray that you take it seriously. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Because I have a lot of things. What does say the Lord? So I've been up early, but the thing is though, I told you, I have to get on here and I have to hear from God. I'm not going to just give you anything of what Deanna says. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But I'm going to give you what does say the Lord in this hour, in this moment, in this time, what we need. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Too many people just pimping and simping. Oh, come on, somebody. What am I saying? Pimping the word of God and simping it out. Just simple find it out just making it sound good no 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 god says tell them what i say come on somebody so our first scripture and i pray that you have a um a, a paper and a pen because remember doing this fast if you, if any of you follow me you know how i roll this is going to be a sharp bible study it's not going to be a bunch of just okay this is what i no 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 I'm not going to be preaching as much. I'll be teaching. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So the first reference scripture is today is actually from Matthew 17, 21. This is going to be our foundation scripture throughout the whole fast. And it says, how be it this kind goeth out, not but by prayer and fasting. A lot of things that you're trying to get done, God says, it cannot get done without praying and fasting. You know, and I have to be very transparent and I'm not trying to bash anyone. I was on somebody's live the other day and it it it, it is bothering me to be honest with you what they said. Um you have to understand our number one defender is the enemy. The enemy hates us. Oh come on somebody I as a matter of fact I'm gonna go to that scripture. Just bear with me just one moment. Hallelujah. So I'm going to tell you what does say the Lord. I have written down everything. Praise God. Praise God. All right. Here we go. All right. So you have to understand Ephesians 6 through 12. And I'm going to go ahead and read that because I, I don't know why people want to just keep preaching on haters and our brothers and our sisters. Let me tell you something. I will tell what thus said the Lord. It doesn't matter if it was you. If it doesn't matter if it was my daughter, my sister. Y'all not ready for me, huh? We are mandated to tell people the truth. It doesn't matter if I love you or not. It doesn't matter if you love me or not. If you have something to say, what thus said the Lord. A lot of us, we don't want to tell each other the truth, but you have better tell each other the truth because Isaiah says that the blood will be on your hand. So let me read this. Ephesians Chapter 12, it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So I don't know what they talking about, but a human is not in high place like that. Come on, somebody. That is spiritual wickedness. That is demons. That is warlocks. Come on, somebody. So don't get it twisted. That is your enemy. The spirit of the devil is your enemy, not your brother and sister. Yes, they might be being used by the enemy, but the enemy is still the enemy. I, I, I. I'm, I'm kind of subterred when a person just talk about people and not the enemy because we have to stay focused. God says that love your brother and sister and forgive them 70 times 77. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Seven times 77. Sorry. And so you have to understand that we have to do that. Praise God. Praise God. So let me go ahead. This is going to be a long, short one. <laughs> long, but short. Okay. So let me tell you what that said, the Lord. And I got to do this thing like he said. Okay. The title of our Bible study this morning is going to be The Power of Everything. And this is deep. So I really need you, after you listen to this, go back and listen some more because you'd be surprised. I'm telling you, God went in this morning. I was like, when he's talking to me, I'm just saying, oh God, oh God, that's so good. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the power of God. 
The power of God will set you free. The power of God will deliver you. The power of God will tell you the truth. The power of God will give you wisdom and discernment, which you should ask for every day. Every day, I'm, you don't hear me. Pray over yourself, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I pray that you grant me wisdom and discernment. Solomon was the richest king, but he asked for God to give him wisdom and discernment before he asked for money. And that's why he was the richest king. A lot of you are asking for money, God says. Cars, positions, titles, placements in, in the ministry. You want to be high. But let me tell you something. You know how many people are high and then get brought low because they do not possess wisdom and discernment in this hour in this lifetime my brothers and my sisters you will need wisdom and discernment oh come on somebody greater than money because wisdom and discernment will keep you from marrying the wrong person wisdom and discernment will keep you from making the wrong decision wisdom and discernment will save your life oh come on somebody hallelujah so it's the power of god that you need more than anything in this world not a man not a woman not money not a job not a house not a car but the power of god God should be first. Your relationship with God should be first. That's what God told me to tell you this morning. So many people have allowed their relationship with God to be subservient because you're running after money or you're running after that job. I mean, I'm telling you, when you got to be to work, you there, huh? Oh, but, but why is it that we like laxy daisy when it goes to church or, or even church things or activities or what God says to do? It's like, I'll get there when I get there, but I bet you you'll hop and skip for that boss. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The power of God, you should never let your relationship with God suffer. That should be the first and foremost thing in your life. Matthew 6, 33 says, you say, but seek ye the first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Notice he said his righteousness because we're not that right. Come on. As long as we're in this human flesh, we will not be right. Oh, we will strive towards perfection. Oh, come on, somebody. But you will never be right. Oh, hallelujah. As a matter of fact, I get scared when people think that they got it together because there's only one perfect being and that's the Jesus, the Christ. Hallelujah to his name. I feel the power of God upon here. All right. The second thing is the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is real. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the power of God. Let me tell you something. What's wrong with the church? And, and hold on. Because a lot of people don't understand my mandate, so they get it twisted. I, I, I hear them. As a matter of fact, you'd be surprised. Some of the famous ones have said it. And, and even on lives. Uh, she, there she go talking about people. Uh, uh, there she go again. Let me tell you something. What my mandate is to tell the truth. I have the spirit of Elijah and Deborah. And I didn't ask for those two because those are two heaviest, heaviest spirits of a prophet. Oh, I'm about to school you this morning. When you are called to anything in this world, evangelist, minister, prophet, let me tell you, oh, this is deep and I need you to catch it. And, and this is not something that I just, I'm just saying, this has been researched. I have done a lot of research. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Not only that, by the power of the Holy Ghost, whatever position that you're operating in, the spirits of the latter, I mean, uh, of the earlier prophets, you are always subject to those prophets. Meaning, what am I saying? Oh, this going, I got to break this thing down. You need to ask God, what spirit am I operating in? Because it's called a regenerated spirit. And what happens is, all it is, that's why he says, I'm the beginning and the end. Whoever was in the beginning, we're talking about the Apostle Paul, Prophet Elijah. You'd be surprised what spirit works in you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm going deep this morning. Hallelujah. So, let me come back to what I'm saying. I can't help it that God have given me the spirit of correction. But like I said before, he corrects me first. You see, because that's what we don't have in church anymore. I mean, people don't want to correct. No, no, let's just pray for him. Well, we're going to pray for you, but we're going to tell you about your ugly with love. We're going to tell you about your ugly stuff with love. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So the power of the Holy Spirit is real. So I'm going somewhere this morning. This is what thus said the Lord. God said, Deanna. they don't possess the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why if you're a Christian and you find yourself cussing, Fussing all the time, being in sin, drinking, dirty thinking. Oh, yeah, I'm saying it this morning. Hallelujah. Honey, I'm going to tell you the truth. You need to check your Holy Spirit status. Because when the Holy Spirit works in you, it changes you. It convicts you. It say, don't do that. Don't say that. You need to repent. You need to call that person and apologize. So when you have a renegade spirit, a rebellious spirit, a lying spirit, any type of spirit, you need to check your Holy Spirit range. Because the Holy Spirit will bring you into subjection. Oh, come on somebody. Hallelujah to his name. 
So this is the power. We're talking about the power of everything. Oh, hallelujah to his name. Now let's talk about the power of sin. The power of sin will separate you from God. The power of sin will lead you into places that you thought you'd never go. As a matter of fact, that you say that you'll never go again, thus said the Lord. Hallelujah. This stuff is real. The power of sin is real. And the devil knows that. That's why he says, come on. Come come out and play. Come play with me. Come sin with me. Or oh, oh, that's why he'll send this one, that one. He'll send a job. He'll send whatever it takes to distract you. Just like just now. I had a phone call come through. Come on, somebody. Most people get a ding, especially if you subscribe to me. So why are you calling? Oh, come on, somebody. If you're being used, you're being used. You don't hear what I'm saying. The enemy will use anything or anyone to try to deter you from your assignment, from God, from being a spirit filled. You don't hear what I'm saying. And, and, and he's on his job 24-7. Let me tell you about the power of sin. The power of sin have allowed Christians to become lazy. You want to know why the world is winning right now? Because we don't get in our word the way we used to get in our word. We don't pray the way we used to pray. We don't labor the way we used to labor. We don't fast the way we used to fast. Yeah, I'm saying it. I remember the old school. And a lot of people say, well, you know, it, it's new times. We got to do new things. Well, I don't know about you, but this new, this new church ain't got no power. Come on, somebody, y'all ain't ready for me. This new church ain't got no power. Oh, they got the gift of gab. Oh, and they, they, they could put on a show. They got so much charisma, so much charisma. Oh, you don't hear me. I'm talking about as an entertainment spirit. They will have you. I'm talking about hollering and, and doing everything else. But when you really check your spirit, is it the Holy Spirit? Because let me tell you something. And I got to go here. Sometimes God will tell me, stop on this live and listen. And at first I said, ooh, they powerful. They powerful. And I got to tell the truth. And I don't care who it cut. No, you don't hear what I'm saying. Then all of a sudden I analyze that thing and I go back again. I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Because you can be food. The Bible says even the elect in this hour should be food. I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So I'll start replaying because that's what God will do. God will replay. I said, wait a minute. That didn't sound biblical. Oh, I'm going to go back and play that thing over and over and over again till I find out what spirit working. The Bible says, know them that labor among you. Let me tell you something. Church, we don't know who's laboring among us. Just because they look good. Just because they sound good. Just because they have a full, a, a full church. Yeah, I said it. Because let me tell you something. I was talking to a sister from New York last night. And I'm going to tell you something. The ones that are truly authentic don't have full churches. Y'all ain't ready for me this morning. The ones that are truly authentic, like myself, we don't have this, 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 this. Y'all don't hear me. Because the world, they don't like the truth. The church don't like the truth. Because the first thing they say is, who do they think they are? Or they are say, oh, they judging. Can I tell you something? Let me tell you something. We have a whole book of, judge, of judges. We have a whole judicial system. What does that tell you? Hello? We're supposed to judge between good and evil. We just don't judge who goes to heaven or hell. Come on, somebody. So, so miss me with all that you're not supposed to judge. The devil is a lie. You better judge. You better judge who you let into your life. You better judge your actions. You better judge. Hallelujah to his name. We judge the actions. We don't judge the person. Don't get it twisted. Y'all better write that in the comments. We judge the actions. We don't judge the person. We're not God, but I'm a judge if you ugly. Oh, come on, somebody. If you doing this and doing that, I'm supposed to judge it because I don't want that stuff attached to me. Hallelujah. You don't hear what I'm saying, which brings me to the next power, the power of friends. You better know who your friends are. Oh, let me tell you something, because what's ever in them going to get on you. And I'm just being real because spirits transfer. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. If you are with a liar, you're going to be the next liar. If you with somebody that's adulterous, you're going to be the next adulteress. You don't hear what I'm saying. You got to judge the actions of those people that you're around. You want prayerful friends. You want powerful friends. Come on, somebody. I'm not saying don't love people. That is not what I'm not. I'm saying hear me clearly. What I am saying is that I have to judge your actions. And if they do not align with the word of God, the, even the Bible says, get away from them. Yeah, I'm going to paraphrase that. Get away from them. As a matter of fact, let them feel so ashamed that they feel ashamed of their sin. I'm paraphrasing. But no, we don't do that no more. I'm going to tell you what we do. Well, you know, I'm talking all behind people back. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't do that. If you're my friend, I don't do that. I'm coming at you. And hold on, with love. Now, now, sometimes they have to be stern. I'm going to be real with you because a lot of people, you know, they, they, you, you know, you, you, no, no, no. 
As Paul said, and a lot of you need to pray this prayer. Before you talk to anyone, God, how should I come to them? Because God knows their spirit. Some people could take me, because <clears throat> I, I I know I could be, you know. But then sometimes you may have to say, you know, be loved. Blah, 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 with love. But tell them the truth. Let me tell you why people are dying and going to hell. Because y'all are not telling them the truth. Y'all sitting up there talking about it. Y'all sitting up there saying this and that. No, go to your brother. Go to your sister. This is not right. You are out of order. Oh, come on, somebody. Write that in the comments. You are out of order because I'm going to tell you we're not hearing those words enough. It doesn't mean that you don't love them. But when you out of order, you out of order. And when you out of order, everything that you touch is out of order. The Bible says in in James that a double-minded man is unstable in all their ways. You don't notice that? If you fickle, you fickle. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on. We're talking about the power of everything. So let's move to the next one. The power of time. Oh, this one deep. I, and I pray that you're writing this stuff down because this stuff is what God gave me and it's deep. Let me tell you about the power of time. Oh, hallelujah. I got to slow this thing down. You only have a certain amount of years to live on this earth. I'm telling you what does say the Lord. You're supposed to be about your assignment. But yet a lot of you want to have fun. A lot of you want to vacay. We got more vacation and going on in the body of Christ than the word of God. Yeah, I said it. Let me tell you something. The enemy have came in from the world and, and told you this is the way you do your lifestyle. The devil is a liar. You are on assignment and you only got a short time, baby. Oh, come on, somebody. Because guess what? You're going to die one day. Just like I'm going to die one day. Well, you want to die empty. You want to die with doing whatever. God told you to do. Hallelujah. When Jesus was on the cross, let me slow that thing out. I'm getting a little excited. When Jesus was on the cross, notice what he said. His last words, it is finished. He was talking about his assignment. But you can't hear your assignment if you out there lollygagging. If you out there being a busybody, if you're doing everything but your assignment, most of you haven't even asked God, what is my assignment? You sitting up there working for, you working, you working, you working, you doing everything but what God told you to do. Your job is not your work. A job is a pharaoh system. I don't care what God, I don't care what nobody say. This is what God said. God said, I'm trying to take care of my people supernaturally, but they are hooked under a pharaoh system. You, you, you got to punch in. You got to punch out. Some of you, you think that's all you worthy of. But God said that he tell me, told me to ask you, how did he take care of Abraham? How did he take care of the first family? Y'all don't hear what I'm saying because that's what's the first family. I don't know where y'all get y'all first families from. Mm-hmm, I said it. Let me tell you something. You got to know who you are. The power of time. You don't have a lot of time. Oh, hallelujah. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. God said you don't have a lot of time. The most precious asset that you have, brothers and sisters, beloved, is time. You don't let nobody waste your time. I, I know y'all be tripping on me when I post on Facebook. They, they be talking about, um, you, you have time to chat. I don't have time to chat. What are you talking about? Now listen to what I said. The words chat. That means you just want to chat. Now if you're talking about dust said the law, because I do answer people when I'm led to. And that's another thing too. Y'all need to understand this. Ooh, thank you, Lord. I hear you. The power of time. When you're getting ready to go on a big fast or anything that ha- that deals with thousands, there are over almost 15, 20,000 people on this fast. Let me tell you what God will tell you to do. Separate yourself. You remember when Jesus went up on the mouth for 40 days and 40 nights? We don't do that no more. We, we want to get on Facebook. We want to get on a fly. You look like a model. Yeah, most of y'all look like a model on them flyers. Yeah, hallelujah. I said it. Let me tell you something. You're supposed to separate yourself. Get get quiet. I have not been on the phone with friends or anybody. And, and please don't take it personal because I love you. Oh, God, I love you. But I love God more. Meaning that if God tells me, Deanna, I, I need you to separate yourself. I need to talk to you before this fast start. And that's what he does. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And, and it's not that I, I'm neglect, neglecting you or trying to hurt you. Let me tell you something. When God said get alone, you better get alone. And it doesn't matter who you are and who you're not. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Because let me tell you the heart of God. And y'all remember our souls. God don't care what you drive. I'm sorry. God don't care where you live. You don't hear what I'm saying. God is wondering, where is my people? And are they on assignment? Are they about their business? The power of time. God told me to tell you, you don't have a whole lot of time, especially if you're over 40. Oh, I'm telling you what does said the Lord and even young people these days. Be about your father's business. We're not doing that. It's too much gossiping. It's too much talking. Facebook got everybody going crazy. Yeah, I said it. Everybody wants the spirit of attention. Everybody want to be a star. Everybody want to be famous. Everybody, Are you serious? Do you understand that if you die the day or tomorrow, that you have to face where you're going to be in eternal life? Have you ever thought about that? This stuff is real. People are dying every day. God said, count it wisely. The time that you have left. Be about your father business. 
Stop being busy with everything but what God told you to do. And then when God allows something to happen, then you want to pray. Oh, 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 it's too late now. You should have been praying before that. And let me clarify when I say it's too late. Sometimes you've already made your decision. Not even knowing it. You better be careful, God said. And that was the power of time. Now the next one is the power of witnessing. Oh, church, we don't witness no more. I'm telling you what does said the Lord. We, we get on Facebook and, and, and we're living our best life. And I ain't going back and forth with you. Uh, Yeah. Y'all into all that. The worldly stuff. But when it was the last time you saw somebody, even on your job, walking that needed a word that were hurting. And you saw it. They didn't have this. They didn't have that. They didn't, they, man, you didn't offer them the one thing that could save them. The one person. And that was Jesus the Christ. God said get back to witnessing. Everybody want to be a star, want to be famous, and yet your brother and sister thinking about committing suicide. Your brother and sister over here doing something else. Your brother and sister is hurting and too scared to tell y'all because y'all talk too much and never shut up. The power of witnessing. Sometimes it's just a hug. Sometimes it's just to let them know Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. We don't want to witness no more. We don't want to pick nobody up without no gas money. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me. God said the power of witnessing is real. We got to come back home, church. People are dying out there. And the church, to be honest with you, and, and, and yes, the church is, is under judgment right now. Because there's too much going on. And God, I heard God say, I'm coming back for a blameless and spotless church. God is cleaning out and he is exposing everything and everybody. It doesn't matter if it was me. Anybody could get it. Check your heart. Examine yourself. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Because we all fall short of the glory of God. Hallelujah. All right. God said the power of money. He said the power of money got people lying in his name. They be on Facebook. Facebook. You heard me. I say, yeah, it is Facebook. foot. Because <laughs> God probably put his foot on it. But they did just be scrolling. And I'm talking about the ones that get on here and pimp people for money. And y'all love to have it so. You have never seen me put on a live cash app. I just don't feel right in my spirit doing that. I'm not saying we don't need that. that that's, that's not what I'm saying. But God is a God of order. When the gospel is being preached, there is no way that a cash app should go up in them comments. I'm sorry. The devil is a lie. I'm not saying that they're not authentic, but they're out of order. God is a God of order. You ain't never seen Jesus preach and say, cash out me. Yeah, I see it. And I know they don't like it. I really don't care. We got to get it right. I say we got to get it right. The power of the tongue. So this, this start Bible study is called the power of everything. The power of the tongue. Be careful what you say, God says. Be careful how you say it. I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of people just... And I used to do the same thing. I'm very transparent on purpose. I used to, until God said, stop that, Deanna. He said, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And he said, because you're a prophet, I'll backlash you if you don't, if you say what I didn't tell you to say. But that's the same thing with you. It does not matter being a prophet, a minister, evangelist, whatever the case may be. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those that love it should eat the fruit thereof. Be careful. Be mindful of what you say to each other. Be mindful of what you say about people, because I'm going to tell you something else. A lot of you are getting backlash because you put your mouth on prophets. You put your mouth, and it's not even about being a prophet. You put your mouth on anointed people. Can I tell you something? That's a very dangerous thing. No, I'm not trying to manipulate you. No, I'm not trying to do no witchcraft. I'm telling you the truth here. You keep putting your mouth and you'll wonder why you're going through what you're going through. Come on, somebody. Because the Bible says clearly, and I know everybody in the scripture, touch not my anointing and do my prophets no harm. I don't know what part y'all don't understand. Because y'all are quick to try to read a man, a woman of God. Let me tell you something. Anytime you've seen me say something, it has been a dust said the Lord. Just recently, I had to say something about a, a, a gospel artist that I love. I'm going to say it. It don't matter. Y'all get mad. Come after me. I'm I'm, going to shut you down. That's what I'm going to do. Pew! Shut you down. Because if God said to say it, there's nothing that you or nobody else could tell me. Because I fear God before I fear any man, beast, politician, president. 
He the one has the power. He said, don't be afraid of them that could, could put you this or do that or even kill you. He said, be afraid of the one that has the power to cast you in heaven or hell. Y'all better understand who's in charge. Hallelujah. God say the power of the devil. Some people take it like the devil don't have no power. Are you crazy? I just read the scripture to you in Ephesians. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Y'all know what high places mean. We could talk about the president office, um, the oval office, whichever you want to call it. It's in high places. Not in low places, high places. That is our number one enemy. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The enemy is the devil. And he uses people. He uses things. He's been doing this thing way long before you and I were even thought of. Hallelujah. I'm not saying being scared of it because God has all power. But I don't think sometimes you question things. You're supposed to ask God, is this from you or is this from him? Even when you meet people. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying up in here this morning. I'm talking about the power of everything. All right, let me continue. The power of being under the wrong leadership. The power of being under the wrong leadership will get you twisted. Because I'm going to be honest with you, you'll start having illicit dreams. You'll start operating out of order. Some of you are under people just because they have. Oh, I say that. Some of you people, just because they have a name, they're famous, and they got no power. You're supposed to be connected to whom God have called you to be connected to. And how you know by the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. It is very imperative that you be under who God have called you under. And, and let me give you a clue that you, you guys will be like spirited. Oh, I got to say this. Whatever your calling is, God will call you to that person. Meaning that most people that come close to me are prophets. That's just the way God have ordained it. It doesn't mean that I don't have friends that are, I do have friends that are not prophets. Don't get it wrong. Our associates, we're going to say that. But most people that get close to me, I, I always see the prophetic gift and I say, God, you're funny. But no, he's not. God is not going to call a pastor to a prophet. All right. Maybe for correction or for advice or spiritual advice. But most of the time, whatever your calling is, that's what you're going to be under. So you can what? Be mentored, be taught how to walk in your gift, walk in your destiny, walk in your calling. Now, I know it's hard for a prophet these days because a lot of them don't believe in the fivefold. They, 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 a lot of them are teaching that, oh, that's under the old law. Can I tell you something? The devil is a lie that is in the New Testament, the fivefold. So somebody lying. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So it is imperative that you watch what you enter into your spirit, who you let speak into your spirit. I don't let just anybody speak in my spirit. And even if I make a mistake and allow somebody, like I get on some of these lives and then I'll be like, oh God, I got to get it off of here. Because I'll start picking it up. I don't care how powerful you speak and teach and preach. Because I have a spirit of wisdom and discernment, I'm going to pick it up. And again, not trying to judge that person, but judging the actions of that person. Come on somebody, hallelujah. We do that every day anyway. Come on somebody. You don't want to be around nothing that's not of God. I'm sorry. Not if you of God. Not if you dirty. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm going to say like mom used to say, birds of a feather flock together all day long. I don't care. And if you lay down with a dog, you're going to get some fleas. You can say what you want to say. It is time for you to guard your spirit, said the Lord. I ain't saying act arrogant. That is not of God. That arrogant spirit, that's not of God. Thinking you all the in a bag of chips, stop it. Because if God really pushed back your closet, we'll see them skeletons too. So stop that. That's not what I'm saying. Judge the actions. Is this what you want in your life? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Because I'm going to tell you, people watch everything you do and everything you say. And if it doesn't align up, then that makes you a liar. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So we're talking about the power of everything. So God told me to tell you, be strong in this hour. When you start this fast, pray for your nation. Pray for your leaders. Pray for the government. Pray for the police. Pray for your community. Pray for your city. Y'all wonder what's going on in your city? Are you praying for your city? Y'all sitting up there talking about the city. Are you praying for your city? Have you formed a prayer group? Have you marched around that city? Because let me tell you something. I ain't no joke. Man, I'll ride around here, pour all on the... On, on, the the cement, the road, I don't care who think I'm crazy. This is a spiritual war. This is not a carnal war. Some of you are trying to fight in the flesh and it cannot be done. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. 
So if anything is going on, even about these children that's getting, y'all know a lot of abduction is going on. Can I tell y'all something? They are sacrificing these people. These people are it's not an organ stealing. This stuff is real. So what do we do? You, you, are you trying to tell me that the devil have more power than God? No. People are not praying. And that's what I want to talk about. The power of praying. We got to go back to praying like never before, you guys. Oh, God said prayer. That's what, that's what opened up the Red Sea. God said prayer is the one that brought Jesus back. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Them 12 apostles was praying. Can we see him just one more time before he descended? Ascended, may I say? Hello? You got to understand, prayer will keep your family. Get in that house. Come on, woman of God, man of God. While they sleeping, go through that house with that word of God. And I'm going to tell y'all something. Y'all better leave them technologies alone. I'm not saying that, you know, technology is not good. Get your Bible. Open that Bible and go around your house. And pray in that house, the word of God. The word of God is a two-edged sword. You got a whole sword, use it, God said. The word of God will heal. The word of God will deliver. The word of God will expose. The word of God will get you prospered. The word of God will make doors and open that no man can shut. The word of God is real. The word of God is pure. The word of God is powerful more than anything that you could ever get. The word of God will bring you favor. What are you using? I better yet, like the commercial say, what's in your wallet? <laughs> I better yet, what's in your hand? This stuff real. Prayer, prayer, prayer. I keep hearing it. You got to pray. And, and, and hold on. Thank you, Lord. I hear you. Your prayer may not be answered in the time that you think. But I promise you, God is always on time. Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare give up on you. Tim, too many of you are being discouraged because things are not happening. Can I tell you something? When things are blocked in your life, you need to go and check every door. What door I got open? Do I have a friend that's not supposed to be in my life? Is that a witch or a warlock? Nothing just happens, people. There are blockages that the enemy, excuse me, will sin. A distraction. Whenever something, I'm teaching this morning, whenever something is going on and something is not happening, you need to go on a fast and say, God, show me where it's at. Show me what's going on. Hallelujah. Because I promise you, the devil don't have power over God. Hallelujah. But I'm going to challenge you doing this fast. Get back to prayer like never before. Get in your word like never before. Spend time with God. Spend time with God, people. We don't have a lot of time like y'all think. People dying every day. Get back to witnessing. When you see somebody in error, and you ain't got to be ugly. Do what God says to do. Be about your father's business. Y'all think I just get up on here and do this because I want to be seen? I just don't have time for that. I do this because this is a mandate. Hello? Can you hear me? What is your assignment? What did God send you to earth for? And I'm going to say something that God showed me. And so maybe you can understand how powerful this is. I've said it before, but I'm going to say it again. I ask God, because I'm nosy. You know, they do have nosy Christians, but no, hold on. Let me explain that nosiness. It's to know things. It's to see things. I want to hear God like never before. I want to see. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says that you should have more power than me. And this was Jesus talking. That's the power I want. I hope you want the same power. He said, because you should do greater things than me. So I asked God, I said, God, how did we get here? And this will bless you. This will bless your soul. God showed me in a vision that heaven is really real, right? And it's like, man, it's like a big courtroom. It's, it's real big and it's pretty and it's shiny. The gold, I've never seen that type of gold before. And I, I don't know if I told you, I did go to heaven. Yes, an angel transported me to heaven. It don't matter who believed me or not. Hey, I'm going to my grave with that one. I know what I saw. And so I'm telling you, this is what happened. We were all with God in the beginning. And that's why he says in Jeremiah, the first chapter, before I formed you, I knew you. And so here's what happened. I'm using myself as an example so you can understand where I'm coming from. Let's say uh, my, my parents are Wesley and Carolyn Dixon. Okay, so this is what happened. They called me. 
and you all, you have a different name when you're in heaven. So, and I know my name, so I can't say it, but they called me. And so I stood up and they said, okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to go and you're going to be the daughter of Wesley and Carolyn Dixon at a certain time, Deanna. You're going to remember your assignment. Oh, come on, somebody. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. I was 27 years old when I remembered who I was. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? I was walking down. I'll never forget this. I was walking around. I had $5,000 in my, in my pocket. And we're talking about money. Just keep, follow me. Follow me. And I'm walking around. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm walking around. I'm like, I don't feel right. I don't feel happy. And I should have been happy because I was in love. I was dating somebody. I mean, we had a house. Everything was fine. And I said, not happy something's wrong something is wrong it's when I really start seeing that I had a calling on my life it's like I was unsettled it's like nothing would make me happy a man cause money nothing getting high yeah I said it I'm gonna keep it real some of you still getting high and so um God began to call me I've chosen you I've called you. And this was right after I tried to do things because if you read my testimony you know it was a lot of things that led up to that day and I said but who am I? What am I supposed to do? I started remembering that I was somebody else. Y'all ain't ready for me. I started remembering I had a calling. I started remembering God. Did that happen to you? Because I promise you it did. There was a time when you came to yourself. Sound familiar? The prodigal son and the prodigal daughter. You will come to yourself. You say, I'm supposed to be doing something. I'm supposed to be saying something. I'm supposed to be moving something. I'm supposed to be shaking something. Hallelujah to his name. And you'll start remembering. And then that's, that's when you, God will draw you closer. And you get closer to God and closer. And then y'all become one. And then you do your will of the Father. Because now you remember. I remember. I remember. I'm God's. I remember I have an assignment. I remember, I, I, I'm yet flesh, but I'm really spirit. What am I saying? You're more spirit than human. Come on, somebody. All you have to ask God is to remember your assignment. When God told me that, I was like, ooh, that's good. You got to remember your assignment. But I promise you this. You have an opposer. The enemy don't want you to remember who you are and who you were with God. He don't want you to know your assignment. He don't want you to do your assignment. He'll send this one. He'll send that one. And they subtle. They subtle. They subtle. Oh, come on, somebody. Let me tell you something. People think they slick. And yeah, I'm saying it. I see people trying to steal my time. Trying to pull this way, that way. And I ain't going to lie. I look at them for a moment. I'll be like, you know, a blank stare like, you know, I see you, right? You know, I know what you're trying to do, right? And I give, even give them the benefit of a doubt. And then I'm like, Wow. They're really letting God use them. I mean, the devil used them. People of God, all I'm saying is, you got to have a ton of vision. I feel the power of God. You got to have a ton of vision when it comes to God. Oh, come on, somebody. People don't understand me. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be real with you. I, I even had some, I'm going to tell y'all now, I know there's some liminal messages. Some mom said, oh, she be hollering. Can I tell you what this is? The power of God. I ain't hollering. What's wrong with you? I'm a trumpet in the earth. Hallelujah. I'm going to blow my trumpet. And if you can't listen, that's on you. If you can't hear, that's on you. If you don't know the spirit of God, that's on you. Hallelujah to his name. People will try to put you in a box. People will try to talk about you. People will try to mock you. But honey, ton of vision. Ton of vision. Because I'm listening, but and I'm dismissing. I'm listening, and I'm dismissing. Because I'm focused on God. I, I just got to do what God said to do. Because I don't know how much time I have left. So God, use me. God, use me. God, use me to have Nothing left until I can say it is finished and go to God. That's what we should be about. I don't care if you don't like me, don't understand me, talk about me. I'm a, I'm a little compared to the mission. Hallelujah to his name. Get back on a mission. Don't care if they talk about you. Don't care if you don't have this, that. Ah, you might not be the most beautiful. You might not have this. You might not have that. You might not have who. You might not have what. But as long as you got God, you are right. As long as you don't let go God, God got you. God will give you the power of the Holy Ghost to move mountains, to break yokes off of people's lives, to speak into their lives. To heal, to deliver. Hallelujah for the power of God. That's what this is about. About no showing no money. Although they have made it about that. And they will surely have their reward, said the Lord. It's about doing everything that God asks you to do. 
We ask them, God, pay my bills. God, please, 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 please. But have you done what he asked you to do? And I ain't going to lie. Sometimes he asks you to do some hard things. Oh, they be so hard and make you cry. But wait a minute. Did not God ask his own son? I need you to go down to earth. I need you to, to, to redeem them. I need you to die a horrible death. They're going to beat you with the cat of nine tails. They're going to spit on you. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, the church going to do it to you. But will you do this for me, my son? And Jesus did. So the things that Jesus did are nothing compared to what he's asking you to do. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to his name. So it's about souls. It's about souls. It's about souls. Oh, I feel the power of God. So this is it. That's what, <clears throat> excuse me, what God of Coke told me to um say. And I'm just telling you right now. My heart cries for the body of Christ. And I need y'all to know something. When I have to say, I thus say the Lord, it does not matter who you are. I have to be obedient. I will be obedient. Because I don't care about you like me. It's about your soul. And if God want them souls, God shall get what he wants because I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I am the great I am, said the Lord. He used who he used. Hallelujah. So God bless you. Be in power today. As a matter of fact, I'm going to pray for you. Stretch out your hands or just listen to the voice. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father God, first of all, we repent of anything we may have said or done, knowingly or unknowingly. Oh, Father God, forgive us. Keep us. Reach us, Father God. Oh, hallelujah to his name. Father God, I plead the blood of Jesus over everyone that's in the sound of my voice. God, do it. You know what they need, Father God. You know what they have need of as far as healing, deliverance, even a family member that's not saved, Father God. Oh, Father God, we still believe in the power of God. Oh, hallelujah, we summon you, God. We summon you, God. We summon you, God. We need you, God. The power of God. The fire of God. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost. Send the Holy Ghost, God. Send the Holy Ghost. The real Holy Ghost, God. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God, I plead the blood of Jesus over their mind, their soul, and their body. Cleanse them, God. Purify their hearts, their minds. Teach them. Let the Holy Ghost be on them so heavy that the fire of God is seen in their eyes, their speech, their spirits. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God, we need you in this hour. We cover all ministries. We cover this world, Father God. Father God, so many people are dying without you, God. Father God, raise up a standard again. Revive this church. Revive this church. I'm talking about for real, not for play. Expose what needs to be exposed and build what needs to be built and tear down what needs to be torn down, God. Oh, we need you, God, like in this hour like never before. We thank you, God. We give you honor and we give you praise, God. In Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name, let us all say amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. I feel the power of God. Let me tell y'all something right now. Everybody don't want God. I don't know why God's making me say this. Everybody don't want God. Oh, you don't hear me. They'll use God, but everybody don't want God. You Remember, Satan transforms himself into the angel of light, God says. So there are some preachers that really don't like God, but they like the benefits of God. God says, test the spirit by the spirit. We're not doing it anymore. That's why some of you are getting hoodwinked, bamboozled. If it ain't of God, have nothing to do with it. Hallelujah to his name. So God bless you. God keep you. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Soldier for Jesus Christ and so are you. Roll out soldiers. God bless.